Good morning and welcome to the little apartment on the prairie. I am sitting here this morning cutting off a whole bunch of peaches. Oh, this is only a tiny portion. I got two 50 pound boxes of uh, peaches and I've just been cutting up peaches and cutting up peaches and cutting up peaches. But I thought while I was cutting up peaches, I'd talk a little bit about camping. I went camping last week. Um, I haven't been home for quite a week yet, and honestly, I kind of wish I was still there. It was so relaxing. After I set up my camp, I just spent several days sitting, like, in the shade with my feet propped up on my cooler, watching the wind blow the leaves and watching the clouds and the ripples on the lake, and it was really relaxing. I totally, I'd rather be there than here dealing with 50 pounds of peaches. But, I like jam, and I like, you know, peach cobbler, and I like having fruit in the winter, and, you know, this is, this is what I do. So I need to do this. I need to can some tomatoes. I made some wonderful salsa that I took with me on my camping trip, and it was so good. And I kind of would like to make more of that, but I also want just some plain canned peaches, because I use them... For making chili and stuff. Hello Whiskers, you can't get up here on my lap right now while I'm cutting up peaches, darling. Okay, so camping was like really relaxing. It just let me clear my mind and it was great, but camping is also a time that for me that I get to practice things. Like I get to practice building a fire and I get to practice building a fire under different types of conditions. Um, you know, sometimes it's wet, sometimes it's windy. Okay, I live in Nebraska, so it's windy a lot. Did you know it's hard to build a fire when it's windy? It can be really challenging to get a fire going when it's very windy. And like I said, I'm in Nebraska. If you didn't know, it's windy here a lot. So being able to get a fire going when it's windy is important. And I also get to learn how whiskers, you can't jump on my lap right now, honey. She really wants, the kitty really wants in my lap. I don't know where Sassy is, but Whiskers likes to sit on me when I'm talking. And she can't do it while I'm cutting up peaches. So, uh, it also lets me practice cooking over a campfire. And, like, figuring out the best way to cook things. And, you know, like, at one point I wanted to bake potatoes. And I knew I could, like, bake them in the embers of the fire. But I had no idea how long that would take. So dinner was a little bit late that night, but it was really, really good, and that was nice. Um, you know, I get to practice putting up a tent. Did you know it's hard to put up a tent when it's really windy? Which, you know, I live in Nebraska, so yeah, I gotta be able to put up the tent when it's windy if I'm gonna go camping. But it gives me the opportunity to kind of practice some other things, too, that aren't necessarily concrete skills, but I think they're important. Like, I get to practice being slightly uncomfortable, which sounds kind of weird, probably, but, you know, sometimes it's a little hot, sometimes it's a little cold, um, the ground is hard, that kind of thing, and we, I feel like it's good to practice that in terms of being prepared. You know how many people think that, like, if there's I don't know. If the apocalypse happens, they're going to bug out and run into the woods and live in the woods. And, and these are people who, like, can't hike for 30 minutes before they're tired and need to rest. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with not being able to hike very far without needing a rest. Because, you know, I don't do that much hiking myself. And I can't backpack. Because I can't carry a lot on my back. Um... But then that's not a very good, like, plan to survive a disaster if you can't do that anyway. Um, you know, it lets me kind of practice for that kind of stuff. And it lets me practice being alone. It lets me practice um, being without, like, constant access to Facebook and all this electronic stimulation that we have all the time. And I feel like that's just really good for me, and I feel like it would be really good for a lot of people. Um, besides the fact that it's really relaxing. But, like, it's hard for me to go to sleep at night when it's quiet. 
And it's not even like it's quiet where I'm camping. You know, there's all these crickets and stuff I hear. And where I went camping this past week, I could hear coyotes at night. And it was the coolest sound. So it wasn't even like it was just dead quiet. But, um, you know, I'm used to like listening to an audio book or having a movie playing while I'm falling asleep, which I think a lot of people fall asleep with the TV on these days. And even just like if the power goes out and you don't have that, are you going to be able to sleep? And it's kind of hard for me to sleep, especially the first night when I don't have that. And so I, you know, get to listen, you know, fall asleep listening to the coyotes, which is so way cooler than any movie you could possibly be listening to, let me tell you. It's just really neat, and I really enjoy it. But at the same time, that first night especially, it's hard for me to go to sleep. And I don't know, tell me what you think. Do you have trouble going to sleep without noise or without, like, electronic light and stuff like that? I think a lot of people are used to, like, the light from the TV and the noise from the TV when they fall asleep. I also had a really good time this past time I went camping um, trying to identify some different plants. And there's this app that I found that I got on my phone that's called Picture This. And I think it's, like, $3.99 a month or $2.99 a month. It's something really cheap. It's under $5. It's the only app I have ever paid for because it's so much fun. You take a picture of a plant, and it tells you what the plant is. Now, I don't know if it's always right. I mean, if I'm identifying something and I'm not positive if it's an edible plant or something that's going to kill me, I'm not going to rely only on what this app says. But it was really fun to run around and take pictures of trees and plants and stuff and see what the app told me it was. And then I could look them up um, online or I have several books for identifying plants and like find out more about them and kind of make sure that it was telling me the correct thing. And I took pictures of a bunch of plants that I knew what they were just to see what, you know, to test it and see if it told me the right plant. So that was really fun. And um, kind of helped me practice identifying plants, which I know is not something that everybody's into, but I enjoy doing that. So that was really fun. So let me know if you all go camping and what neat things you learn from camping. And after I can a million peaches and tomatoes, I want to go camping again in September. I don't want to go Labor Day weekend because I think it's going to be really ridiculously crowded, but maybe... Like the week after that. Figure, Sassy. You're coming to see what you can get into now, aren't you? There's bread over there. I made bread earlier. Sassy's thinking about taking a bite of bread, aren't you? Or licking some peaches, and I don't want you licking them. Alright, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't, and everybody have a great day.